questions in before I go.
The Lord be with you. Yeah, you can go ahead and respond to that. <laughs> Beautiful music this morning. A few announcements as we begin our Palm Sunday and moving into Sunday of the Passion. We do both here on the Sunday of Holy Week. Would like to highlight in your purple announcement page the Holy Week services this week on Thursday at noon and 7 and on Friday, Good Friday at noon and 7. Those are a way to deepen our faith and experience of this time before Easter and just invite you to come and do that. If this is a first time for you doing that, you'll be amazed to know all the things that happen during the week before Easter. And Easter is um, a celebration that the world seems to understand and culture seems to understand. And so I encourage you to invite someone to Easter services with you next week. Uh, there are many people for whom Christmas Eve and Easter make some sense in their world. And we all need a little bit of hope. And it's a good time to hear a word of hope next Sunday for Easter. So bring someone along with you and spread the hope. A few notes for us. Uh, this morning's worship, um, our opening hymn will sing verses one and three together, and then there's a Bible reading um, from the center aisle, and then we'll sing verse four. I just didn't want that to surprise anybody, because no, no one wants to keep singing when everybody else has stopped singing, right? And then we, the tradition is to wave our palms. I know they gave me a super fancy palm today. If anybody's interested in it after worship, you may have it. Um, wave your palms during worship. And when you hear the word Hosanna in the reading or in the song, you can wave, give it a little extra, like extra wave. And then something a little different this year for those who are used to this service, the offering is um, going to be received early in the service to align with the Palm Sunday song that choir will be singing. So it's okay, it's just gonna come a little earlier than usual, just wanna prepare you for that. And now I invite you to greet one another and then when the music starts, we'll start singing. Say hello to the people around you.
The Holy Gospel according to John. Five days before the Passover, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. The Gospel of the Lord. pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. O God of mercy and might, in the mystery of the passion of your Son, you offer your infinite life to the world. Gather us around the cross of Christ and preserve us until the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We'll now worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings.
be seated. The story of Christ's passion serves as scripture and sermon combined today. The whole reading is contained in your bulletin and on the bottom of page seven, there are a couple of responses that belong to all of us that are written in bold that we'll all say together. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some who were there complained to one another in anger, and scolding the woman said, Why is the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. But Jesus responded, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you will always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city, and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him, one after another, Surely not I. 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 It is one of the twelve who is dipping the bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one to not have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink the fruit of this vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane. Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. 
and going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came down and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. They did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign. The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. When Judas came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi! And kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of the disciples deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none, for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We hear him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned Jesus as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. Then the servant girl, on seeing him again, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are Galilean. But Peter began to curse and swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. 
Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked again. Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call King of the Jews? Crucify him! Why, what evil has he done? Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. After flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, Hail King, King of the Jews. Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put him in his own clothes. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's he calling for Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joses, and Salome. These used to follow Jesus and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. 
Pilate wondered if Jesus was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, Pilate granted the body to Joseph. Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, saw where the body was laid. Then Joseph rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you ease our troubled hearts as we put our faith in you. Continue to teach us to walk in your way and rejoice in your truth so that we may know the fullness of life eternal. Hear us, O God. In this coming Holy Week, help us to be faithful. Help us to walk with you, finding your love that is always present. Let us hear your voice calling us always to love our neighbor, to reach out and take the hand of all in need. Hear us, O oh God. 
we rejoice in the baptism of Juliana Faye Bradenburg with her family, Peter, Aaron, Marion, and Eddie, and with gratitude for God's eternal promises to us in baptism, presence, forgiveness, and a Christ-shaped life. We pray for all who live in distress, and, O oh God, please be with all who suffer and are in need of hope and healing. L, Helen, Venus, Barbara, Doug, Mark, Karen, Sheila, Nora, Adelaide, Fred, Sharon, Penny, Larry, Don, Jim, and the Palestinian, Israeli, and Sudanese people. Hear us, O oh God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son in mercy. Please accept these petitions and any others that we silently name in our hearts. Bless our comings and our goings. In your name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share Christ's peace with one another. I invite you to remain standing as we begin Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Mighty and merciful Lord, you gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. In your great love for the world, you sent Jesus, the beloved, who reached out in hope and healing, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. You may be seated. This is Christ's table set for all of us. Whether you sing Hosanna's praise or whether you cry in crucified rage, this meal is for you. Here in the sanctuary and on live stream, you are invited to communion this morning. On live stream, we invite you to have bread or cracker and wine or juice and to receive them with these words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. 
Here in the sanctuary, you'll be invited forward by the ushers down the center aisle, and you'll receive at the front a piece of bread. Uh, all of it is gluten-free, and then you'll have a choice of either wine or grape juice. The wine is light-colored. If for reasons of your own, you would rather receive a blessing instead of communion, just cross your arms when you come forward and we'll know to give you a blessing. And now we sing the Lamb of God together.
Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Generous God, at this table, you give us a feast of immeasurable grace and gather us by your promises for the sake of the world. Send us forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, may God shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace, sustained by God's promises.